Welcome to VOA's Red Carpet. I'm your host Jackson Vungani with the latest in celebrity news in fashion, sports, film, television from around the world. Let's go. And we begin at the Toronto International Film Festival where actors Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx debuted their injustice drama, Just Mercy. Jordan plays a civil rights attorney, Brian Stevenson, who is representing Foxx's character, Walter McMillan. Sentenced to death for the murder of a young white woman in 1988. Jordan says that playing Stevenson was important at a time when there are still racial disparities in the criminal justice system. I mean, as a black man, you know, you know our communities were, you know, were preyed upon, you know, um, and, and be able to kind of you know, do my part, use my platform to get the story out is extremely important to me. Uh, I feel like um, Brian Stevenson is an extremely important man. He's a national treasure. He's a world treasure. He needs to be protected at all costs. At the premiere, the real life Brian Stevenson expressed the importance of hope. Look, I'm the great grandchild of people who were enslaved, and they had enough hope had to fight for emancipation. My grandparents were terrorized during the lynching era, and they had enough hope. Uh, to, to fight for security. My parents were humiliated every day through segregation and yet made the sacrifices so that I could go to high school and college. And so hope is um, our, our superpower. It's what allows us to do the things that have to be done. Now you may recall when we discussed a big change coming soon to the world of James Bond. British actress Lashana Lynch will be the first ever black and female 007 in the upcoming film No Time to Die. Former James Bond Pierce Brosnan is joining the debate saying that it's great. I think we've watched the guys do it for the last 40 years. He says, get out of the way guys and put a woman up there. I think it would be accelerating. It would be exciting. The suspense is already killing us. Todd Phillips' dark comic book film Joker has won the Golden Lion Award at the 76th Venice International Film Festival, cementing its place as the legitimate awards contender for the rest of the season. The Golden Lion previously spotlighted films that went on to win big at other awards, including films from last year's Roma and The Shape of Water. Now, while star Joaquin Phoenix did not win Best Actor Prize, he received praise from Phillips who dedicated much of the speech to the talents of his leading man. Joaquin is the fiercest and bravest and most open-minded lion that I know. And you are a beautiful soul. And thank you for trusting me with your insane talents. In the film, Joaquin transforms from struggling stand-up comedian Arthur Fleck into Batman's classic nemesis. And in Nigeria, students at the Plateau University recently organized a festival to celebrate their culture and to build a better sense of community. Our VOA house reporter Eliasu Kasimu has our story from Joss. Let's check it out. Students at the Television College in Plateau State hold this cultural festival to help remind each other that it is the strength of their traditions that makes for a richer community. It's also a chance to have fun and show off their dance moves. This ceremony is held every year to remember our culture and traditions so they will not be forgotten and so that we will not find ourselves mixing other outside cultures with our traditions. The My Culture, My Pride Festival showcases various cultures including Yoruba, Hausa, Fulani, Igbo, Tiv, Naz and many others meant to promote peaceful coexistence among us young people from different ethnic groups. Everyone you see here in this place is a Nigerian from a different state. All of us and all of our languages are here to present themselves. This was done so that I would understand other cultures 
and they, in turn, will also understand mine. This is done so that we can all live in peace with one another. At this moment, we are divided by tribalism and religious differences in Nigeria. This type of festival amongst young people will go a long way in promoting peaceful coexistence in our country. I am Jarawa by tribe, but I went and danced with Fulani and danced with students from Mangu. I enjoyed myself. Culture has a way of unifying people. There was a wide variety of traditional foods at the festival, as well as competitions in debate and in presenting the news in various languages. I think if we embrace our differences, it will help greatly uniting Nigeria. Our unity among young people will be strong and nothing will challenge that. That is the hope for this festival, to unite Nigerian cultures and to promote peace. And it's New York Fashion Week and this year's must-see tickets include Cabajan Raymond's Paya Moss collection named Sister in which the creative director continued his thesis of highlighting erased stories of black people's contributions to popular American culture. The concept came from rock and roll and the birth of rock and roll and the black woman who invented rock and roll, or the sound that we now know as rock and roll, Sister Rosetta Tharp, black queer woman who invented the sound in church. And, um, you know, the credit is often given to like Chuck Berry, Elvis, and, you know, different people. Um, but it's actually, it's her. And I feel like black women are often erased from things. And I wanted to, I wanted to do this um, specifically for black women. Raymond explains what he hopes to achieve with the spring 2020 ready to wear collection. What I aim to do is to make uh, disenfranchised people, black people, with this, with this series and, you know, minorities and women f know and understand how important they are to um, this thing called America right now. It's my window, I can stand the rain. It's my window. And then there was legendary designer Tommy Hilfiger and star actress Zendaya who made their way to one of America's most iconic and stylish neighborhoods for their Tommy X Zendaya collaboration runway show. Outside the famed Apollo Theater, a facade of historic Harlem townhouses were built on a blocked off street, which was filled with dancers and musicians matching the 70s theme of the show. Hilfiger said that Zendaya and Style go hand in hand, and so teaming up with her was an easy choice. She really carries herself well. She looks great in whatever she's wearing, but she's got a sense of style that I think she and La Roach, her creative partner, have worked on for a long time. And I thought, if I could get like a little an eyedropper of that sense of style brought into my company, we'd be cool. <laughs> and she gave me more than an eyedropper. She turned on the faucet. Zendaya said that she was very involved in the creative process and thanks to the support of the Hill Figure team let me do whatever I wanted, which is great. <laughs> um, no, he told me that, you know, I, I would be able to be as creative as I wanted to, and, and I was surrounded by such an incredible team. The team at Tommy was been, was so supportive, and um, yeah, and Law and I just were able to kind of just, I mean, honestly, make our dream clothes, you know, make clothes I've always wanted to make, or um, I've always been inspired by. The collection nodded to the style-filled 70s era with fedoras, bell-bottom pants, tailored suits, and wrap skirts. There were also maxi dresses and plenty of white polka dot and plaid prints with models in all different ethnicities, shades, body types and edges. Zendaya, who is a role model for many young people, said she doesn't take her position lightly. I don't take it with a grain of salt, you know, I, I, really, I really appreciate um, that I'm able to be that in people's lives and be an inspiration and I, I really just try to... Um, be the best version of myself to hopefully inspire somebody else to be the best version of themselves. Um, and whatever inspiration I can provide and offer and doors I can open or whatever I can do, I'll definitely try to do it. This is the second collection for Hilfiger and Zendaya. Runaway models included Winnie Harlow, Sarah Sampaio, Ashley Graham, and Alekwek.
And we take you to a runway in Malawi where the Association of People with Albinism crowned its beauty pageant king and queen as part of efforts to dispel myth that have led to attacks on albinos. Luck Mike Masina has our story from Lilongwe. Let's check it out. Beauty contestants with albinism exuding their wealth in a first ever competition in Malawi in a country where they face stigma and the threat of attack because of how they look. Some 20 contestants demonstrated how albinism can be beautiful. I'm here because I've ever experienced the threat. Even my little friends I was burning to, they even said that I'm money. This has affected my, my, my family because they are there just to protect me. The visiting second princess of Zimbabwe's 2019 albinism beauty pageant aged Malawians with albinism to start living beyond the threats. Refuse to be defined by what people think or see about you, but rather define yourself. Tell yourself what you're capable of. Dream big and always make it happen. People with albinism in Malawi have been attacked because of false beliefs that their body parts, if used in magical potions, can bring good luck and wealth. More than two dozen have been killed since 2014 and more than 100 are missing. The winners of the Miss and Mr. Albinism title offered to join efforts to end the attacks. What I'm going to do now, firstly, um, is to bring awareness to communities, especially the local communities that have that hold negative altitudes, um, myths and misconceptions about persons with albinism. I'm going to stand still and help persons with albinism, first of all by empowering persons with albinism, making them to trust in themselves, trust their ideas, believe in themselves. Pageant organizers plan to hold the event every year. Lamek Masina for VOA News, Lilongwe. When she's not singing, Jennifer Lopez wants her movies to affect change. And so she is proud that her new film, Hustlers, shows strippers in a more positive light. I like walking away from a movie thinking about life, thinking about people, why they do the things they do. I want it to affect me in some way, you know, whether it makes me laugh or makes me cry or gets me excited or gets me inspired. Based on a 2014 New York Magazine article called Hustlers at Scores, the story follows a crew of savvy former strip club employees who band together to turn the tables on their Wall Street clients. While walking the red carpet with co-stars Lily Reinhardt, Kiki Palmer and Constance Wu for the film's world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival, Lopez said the film is about friendship, survival and the double standard when it comes to gender. It's about the power struggle. It's about how differently we're looked at for doing things as opposed to men doing the same things. In this movie, you have these Wall Street guys stealing and taking people's pensions and getting away with it. And then you have these dancers, these exotic dancers, these strippers, you know, kind of stealing from them with money that they've stolen from somebody else and getting in trouble. So it's, it's an interesting thing to look at. And before we end the show today, here is a brief look at the film in theaters now. Check it out. I just want to be able to take care of my grandma, maybe go shopping every once in a while. Woo! These Wall Street guys. You want them drunk enough to get their credit card? But sober enough to sign a check. I really want to see you, sir. Please help! It's my husband! I was born a flex. Yes. Diamonds on my neck. Yes, I like more than sex. I like more than sex. We didn't do anything wrong. I like more than sex. Is he dead? <laughs> You know, Tony wouldn't let this happen. I'm gonna text him. Who gave her her phone back? Are you in? And thanks for watching VOA's Red Carpet. I'm Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, check us out at voanews.com, on Facebook, Instagram, at YouTube. Let us know what you think about the show. Until next time, goodbye, everyone. Uh, uh, uh.